Howdy! Today, we are going to look at UVing Sloyd models to make them work best with your tileable materials. My name is Peter Sweeney. I am a material artist, and today, I'm going to show you how to make a stylized saloon using Sloyd and Maya. But let's get right into it. Firstly, let's get into the Sloyd program, and we're going to import a Wild West building. For this tutorial, I'm going to be making an old saloon, but you could make anything you want and follow along. Once we have that imported, I'm going to start tweaking the details to make it look a bit more stylized. Firstly, I'm going to stick with the squared top and change to an angled main roof. Then, I'm going to hop into the wackiness sliders and start changing those so I can get a more stylized feel. Increasing the tilt forward back, the taper sideways and forward back will both allow me to get a more stylized, slanted look like it was just pieced together. Next thing I'm going to do is hop into the dimensions tab to further tweak this model. With some changes to the height, width, and length, we can get a much more compact look, almost like a toy house. I have a stylized art direction in mind and would love to make it look like this was taken straight out of an action figure set. Last thing I need to do is to adjust the taper which will give the details like the windows and doors a nice bevel. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Now, to export it and bring it into our 3D software, make sure when exporting, you select the GLB format. For this tutorial, I'm going to be working in Autodesk's Maya, but the process would be identical if you're working in Blender. First things first, you wanna open a UV editor. This will allow us to see how Sloyd has laid out the UVs for our model. Secondly, I'm going to go into the Panels menu and select Hypershade. This will allow me to select different faces based on the material ID. By selecting objects with the material, I can separate out the different sections in UV space to make them more easily selectable later on. Once I have my UVs spread out, I'm going to add a texture to my main material. For this, I'm selecting the wood planks texture that I created for this tutorial, as it will help me later on. It's important to note that you could use a checker texture here just to look for different distortion in your UV unwrap, but I need to be able to see directionally which way the texture is facing. Looking into the 3D space, you can see that the texture is now applied to our material. The faces tend to have some distortion going on, so I'm going to unwrap them. Here I'm going to use Maya's automatic unwrap, which will give me a consistent starting point where all the faces are scaled properly. If I increase the scale, I can see my texture is now appearing naturally on the faces. One problem I'm running into is that some of the faces are not orientated correctly so that the texture is not appearing the way it should. To fix that problem, I am going to select just the faces on that side of the model and do a best plane projection. This will give me a consistent UV of the whole area. I'm going to continue to do that for the rest of the model. This will allow me to make sure that all the faces on this side of the model are facing the same direction. Once I have all my faces projected properly, I'm going to go in and make sure they are orientated correctly. You can do this by just rotating the UVs, not the model itself, so that it properly aligns with your texture. I will repeat this with the rest of the faces. And once done, we'll be able to lay out my model much more tightly packed. Using the layout function, it is important to make a quick adjustment to your settings. Make sure that your rotational steps are set to 180 degrees so that the UV layout will not flip any of your faces. Moving on to the rest of the model, I will be using Maya's automatic UV feature to get a base starting point and then go in further to see if it needs more work. At this time, it looks like both the details and the glass are UV'd properly. For the wood sections of this model, I'm going to follow the same process that I did for the wood plank sections. This means that I'm going to go to the material settings, and once there, I'm going to swap out the color 
for another texture. For this, I'm using a wood grain texture that I created for this model as well. For this, I'm looking to make sure that the grain is all traveling in a cohesive direction so that it looks like a consistent piece of wood between the top and bottom of the roof and on the deck and along the pillars as well. I'm actually pretty happy with how that looks just from the automatic UV, so I'm gonna leave it as is. Then I'm gonna go in and make sure that I'm moving all the UV sections back to the 1-1 coordinates. And just like that, we have re-UV'd our model to make it usable with our tileable textures. Now all we have to do is export our selection as an FBX to store all that material data. Now, bringing your model into a 3D software, you can just drag and drop a material right onto it. Here in Marmoset Toolbag, I can change the tiling to 6, which allows my texture to repeat across the board evenly. Now, with a properly UV'd model, you should be able to drastically change the look of your piece with a single click. Using a few modular materials, you could quickly build a full town that would be ready to explore in the matter of minutes. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something in this tutorial. With a little bit of tweaking in Maya, we are able to truly get the most out of these Sloyd models. Make sure to stay tuned for more Sloyd updates and tutorials, and I'll see you next time.